Hello and welcome everyone. Today we will see how we can move data from SQL Server to Cosmos DB. To do that, what I have done, I have created a SQL Server in my Azure subscription and that SQL Server is taken from AdventureWorks LT database. That's a sample database supplied by Azure. So when you create the SQL Server, you can choose a sample database so that your database is preloaded so you have some data to play with so i just created the sql server and then i checked in my product table i've got around 295 records available and this is fairly a simple flat table with a couple of um, columns inside it and then you can see uh, it it is pretty um pretty busy table right so it, it has got a lot of information which basically is good enough for me to really move to Cosmos and to have that experience how we can move data from here to the Cosmos DB. So what I need is also a Cosmos DB pre-created. Now this is a product table. So I will go into that Cosmos um, uh, database and you can see that we have got a Cosmos DB created it takes a while to create a cosmos db so i thought of pre-creating the cosmos db and then if you go into the cosmos db uh, document explorer it will tell you what exactly is right now available within that cosmos db database right now we do not have anything so we need first need a database and to have a database we just give a name let's say adventure works and then i just say adventure works and i just keep this thing open so there is some issue let me see okay and then if i say okay this is gonna go ahead and create uh, the database once the database is created i can select the database and then create the container within the database so that's the whole idea so you can think of container as the mapping of the sql table so what i need is that i need to create a new container and instead of creating a database on the fly i pick up the previously created database and then I give the container ID. This is a name you need to provide, right? Um, and that's what uh, the SDK requires uh, you to use. So I will give uh, it a product, okay? And then you need a partition key. So this partition key either could be a product name. So we'll talk more in detail about what partition key is. But think about from a grouping perspective when you do a query to this container you probably focus on one single group and that's a group so it fetch, can fetch the data pretty quickly so you need to map with the table uh, column name and then i will leave everything as is and i say okay it's gonna go ahead and create a container so when these two things are done, what I need, can now go, go and do is that I now can go and open my resource group. And then once this resource group is kind of ready, what I can do is that I can just go to my Azure Data Factory, which I created um, just to start with. So I went ahead and say, add a new resource and chose Azure Data Factory. Now, this is the first time I'm authoring this. So it basically it will allow me to design how my data flow would look like, right? And you can see that it, the landing page really gives me a couple of um, heads up information like um, whether I want to create a pipeline or create a data flow. Can I, can I do a pipeline from a template or I just want to copy the data, right? So if I say that i want to copy the data from um what i it asked me is that it asked me what is your source first of all what is the name they i'll say sql to cosmos so you should actually be giving most 
a significant name which will identify what exactly this does. Now this is because this is the first time I need to first have a connection um, which will pick up the source. So if I say create a connection and then you say Azure SQL and then you pick up the Azure SQL database which basically allows you to really um, select the database from the, within the same subscription if you are in the subscription otherwise provide the connection string information so i'll leave the name as is i pick up my subscription id i pick up the server name uh, and then i say that this is my database which is sample db right and then if you are using sql authentication it will ask you username and password you can even integrate the um, uh, the key vault so let me just say uh, the password and i say create once this is successfully done i'll say never i just go ahead and then try to check if the connection is right um, this is important that connection is able to connect to the resource uh, which is what the important part is now I say next this now gonna go ahead and then say what data set you are trying to bring in I'm only dealing with one table so this copy activity will be created against one table if you select more than one table what it will do it will have only one copy activity but it will be under a loop so it basically will parameterize the name of the test source tables to the destination collection and then make a copy activity which will run inside a loop so that's pretty convenient way of really uh, dealing with it uh, so you can see that i right now have one so it shows the preview of the data and the schema imagine that you are reading a file this really helps but actually in the c relational database this doesn't really matter a lot because you already have things in place but if it is just a file it helps you really identify whether that file looks okay before you really proceed the actual uh, migration so if you say next and then this is where the the destination really comes into play so we do not have a, a cosmos db connection really created so i will go ahead and select a cosmos db if i say that i want to create a cosmos db by selecting the cosmos db sql api remember that you if you create a cosmos db based on the other api you need to select that but we our cosmos db is the document db format that uses sql api so i need i select that one I give the leave the name as is and then I select the Cosmos DB account name that's Cosmos DB I created and then I um, choose the uh, database and it says fail to load uh, let me just see what exactly is wrong over here I can go ahead and then just in case if that fails we can also provide uh, the the cosmos db database details so let us do that and try to see if everything is fine so i go to the key section which basically holds all the information and then i just provide the cosmos db uri and then i use the cosmos db key so let me also pick up the primary key from my cosmos db and then i say database name so i'll say adventure works okay and then just to check if everything is fine right what i can do i can just go ahead and check that so it's not taking the value so let's see what exactly is missing over here so this is document explorer and then i have got adventure works if i choose this adventure works what happens so let me just select the other one um, for the time being so let me just go ahead and say um, is more and by the way cosmos db is always case sensitive so make sure that you type the right one okay so it's not allowing me to connect 
the Cosmos DB IP address is kind of not allowed. You can see that that's the error message you are getting, which means that I should be enabling the firewall settings. So that's a good uh, point we need to really cover here. So it basically talks about what is the firewall and virtual network. So I'll need to select the all network. If we do not select, then it will not allow you to connect. So that's one thing I need to make sure that it is there in place. So once this is updated, then I should be able to basically connect uh, the Cosmos DB using um, the typical uh, Azure subscription way. So I'll say never. And then I just wanted to make sure that this is done. So this takes a few minutes to get this thing configured. And this is also important that you you should be actually um, enabling the firewall for your SQL Server as well. So SQL Server doesn't by default open all the IP addresses. So you need to make sure that SQL Server has got that firewall setting kind of like all network or the specific IP ranges if you would like to add are enabled. So that is important. So uh, let this thing happen while this is happening. So I will just stay here and then um, wait for this to happen. So I will pause the video till it happens and come back and start moving the data. Now, because it is moved, right, it is done. Now you can see the firewall is configured. I can come over here into this and try to load the list of databases. And this time it should be able to load otherwise I'm gonna go and say enter manually and I say adventure works and I say create and this should create that so let me check is if the connection is kind of all right because if this is not connecting the connection is not connecting then data will not move okay so this is successful I have checked it so now my um, source is Cosmos DB Okay, so if I go and then select the source, um, you know that um, Cosmos really uh, does require me to have the container created. So in the second database, which is where I am working on. So if I go into the Cosmos DB and, and then go to the data explorer, uh, document explorer, and then open the database I wanted to um, target. So not the not the mixed ones you can see that there is no um, container available so I can say create a new container and I can say product I can even use a small um, letter and I can just say that product name is my um, partition key because I mostly might do so this partition key strategy is really key when you design um, your Cosmos DB database because this this improves a performance your performance significantly so if you go into that and refresh that list it should now have the product showing up right once this is done you can see that um, you have something called a skip schema mapping for tables right you just uh, check that because this is a document database doesn't re really require any schema at this moment in time so i will not have that check available so i will say next and then it shows me the summary of what i am trying to do and then if i say next what it basically will do it will um, uh, just do everything i needed to do to make sure that uh, this is kind of done right and then i say finish once i say finish what happens you know it basically goes ahead and sits in the in the pipeline list which is basically displayed over here so you can see that you have got a pipeline called sql to cosmos if you open and then there's a copy activity you can go and modify them you can just click on validate it basically will say that everything is fine uh, there is no error or issue on that you can add a trigger you can start moving the database just to verify before we really start moving the database what i wanted to also show you is um, i go to this um, cosmos db and i go inside this adventure works product and then i say new sql query 
I execute this query and I should not have any issue by here because the data is already moved just to verify how many number of records are there so I can say select value count one from C and if I just say execute query it shows 177 so there are some missing records uh, at this point in time uh, we're not sure why but we can really figure it out what exactly happened over here in my ADF pipeline while it tried to move the record now you can see that um, if you go over here into this and then say um, monitor it basically talks about like it failed after some time right so there is a failure uh, so which means that things didn't go well um, might have been some error so we can even read the error and then it says that um, some issue with this so we could fix that but the whole idea is that the data has been moved and you can basically configure all your connectivity and recreate the container and move fresh once these things are already in place so you will be able to really see um, the data from your source to the destination pretty quickly and easily and you do not have to write any law, single line of code to do that with this i want to thank and have a good day